Mob votes. Minecraft's mob votes have always been a bit of a controversial subject, but overall, in hindsight, we probably ended up with the better choices of the possible mobs in most cases. There's even an argument for the Phantom being the best option of the four choices that we had, and yeah, I can hear you typing in the comments already, don't worry, we're going to discuss that bold claim in a bit, but of all the mob votes so far, I feel like the sniffer may have been the worst mistake we have made in one of these votes. And this is coming from somebody who voted for the sniffer, and encouraged others to do the same. So this is not a subject I'm taking lightly. I will be the first to admit that I made a big mistake when casting my vote. But, before we get into that, let's quickly recap what led us to vote on the sniffer in the first place. Because, by a lot, he seemed like the obvious choice. Which is a story as old as the mob vote itself. Back in 2017, we had the first ever mob vote. We were given four choices of possible hostile mobs to be added to the game, unlike today's three. Mob A, the monster of the ocean depths. Mob B, the phantom. Mob C, Trapinch and Mob D, The Hovering Inferno. Now, famously, the mob vote was a scheduling disaster, only giving a brief window to vote. However, the Phantom, with its limited information, still seemed like the best choice. All we really knew was that Mob A would drag players down and attempt to drown them. Mob B would seek out players who have not slept in three days, and keep in mind, with no indication that multiple would spawn constantly throughout the night, all we knew was that it was going to spawn at high altitude if you didn't sleep. Mob C would consume other mobs and items of unsuspecting victims. Okay, yikes. And it could be used as basically a living grindstone to disenchant things, but uh, whatever. And lastly, Mob D was ablaze with shields and a shockwave attack that would spawn randomly with other blazes. You know, as if blazes weren't annoying enough on their own. I mean, between being stun-locked and drowned, randomly losing pets or valuables to something hidden underground, or dealing with an even more powerful and annoying blaze, especially on Java Edition with the much higher detection range, yeah, I think something that supposedly only spawned once after three days in high altitudes seemed like the least annoying option by far. How could we know what a disaster the Phantom would have been for servers and even single player with its janky hitbox, annoying shrieks, never ending clusters of spawning? But hey, we did get slowfall potions, which are pretty dang nice for the inexperienced players fighting the Ender Dragon. Never mind the fact that inexperienced players probably don't know the first thing about brewing. Mojang? In-game brewing book? When? Please? Even the Phantom has a purpose, despite being the most annoying thing they've possibly ever added to Minecraft. But the mistake that was the Phantom would not go unnoticed. A game rule was added to prevent them from spawning, and mob votes from that point on would be a lot safer, and usually with a clear choice. Seemingly by design, to prevent controversy like the 2017 disaster. The very next one was between the Iceologer, a hostile mob that would summon ice chunks to stun and harm players. Okay, annoying sounding again. The Moobloom, which, while very cute, didn't really do much other than provide a absolutely ridiculous amount of yellow dye for free. And lastly, the Glow Squid, which was said to light up the oceans. Yeah, intentionally or not, the false advertising of a light source mob made the glow squid the easy choice. Of course, it did not glow, in fact, when it came out, only being unaffected by light. However, we would unknowingly get glow ink and glowing item frames, which both of those are actually extremely useful for builds, especially the signs allowing dark oak to actually be legible with something other than white dye. Okay, so even if accidentally, we still came out pretty good from this mob vote, but importantly, it left the thought in our minds that these mobs would provide useful features not even mentioned in the initial votes. Given that we got slowfall potions, elytra repair, glowing item frames, and glowing sign text without even knowing that we would. Moving on, we next had a vote between the glare, 
a mob that would attempt to point out light level zero areas, as if you couldn't already see that for yourself with F3 or non-smooth lighting or just a decent monitor. The Allay, a mob that could assist in all kinds of farms and item sorting, and while it might not be as reliable or consistent as a redstone machine, it's far easier to get early game than the materials and know-how to build massive sorting machines. And lastly, a copper golem, with the admittedly really cool mechanic of oxidizing into a statue if not maintained for a long time, and being able to be restored with an axe or lightning strike. But what did he actually do? Push his copper buttons. Randomly. And that's it. Yeah, so obviously the LA one. It even got the ability to be duplicated later. Not bred, duplicated. So no need to find another LA to breed it with for more. Which is also a very helpful and unique feature. So now the picture is hopefully painted that the choice in most if not all of these votes was obvious. And now we expect to get extra and very useful features from the mobs that do win. Even the worst ones. So... What the hell happened with the sniffer? To be fair, the choices were between a even more useless golem, a rascal who would play hide and seek for an iron pickaxe with enchantments on it, or an ancient rediscovered mob that would excavate ancient seeds. Seeds with an S. More than one new plant already confirmed, and it's part of the long-awaited archaeology update? An ancient, rediscovered creature in archaeology? Yeah, of course we voted for the sniffer. As a matter of fact, being talked about so much over the others, being the only mob promised to bring more than one new feature, or so we thought, and tying in perfectly with the archaeology update, all of this has not gone unnoticed, and a theory is circulating that the vote was clearly rigged, given just how much of an obvious choice the sniffer was, and that the other mobs were just designed to fail. But hey, if it was such an obvious choice, does it really matter if it was rigged or not, really? Well, here's where it went wrong. First, what does the sniffer even do? Well, exactly as advertised. They seek out and dig up ancient seeds, but with a new catch. See, sniffers were given a memory of places that they already checked for seeds, which normally restricts how small you can make a sniffer farm. There is a way around this with a design by Il Mango that kind of abuses how the sniffer memory works and his head hitbox, and I certainly recommend checking out his sniffer farm design because there is no way we were going to figure this out in survival. It's weird, and it's going to require building some pretty awful living conditions for the sniffer, but it does work. Still, right off the bat, Mojang seems to have weirdly gone out of their way to make farming these new seeds inconvenient and annoying. Like, how are casual players supposed to learn about sniffer memory in-game? Even the majority of channels covering the snapshots don't seem to know about this feature. But should we even worry about this? Is what we are farming for worth the effort? What do the seeds grow into and provide us with? Decoration. No, that's actually it. Even the torch flower, which could have actually been torch-like, providing light to a large outdoor garden or yard without needing to hide torches under carpet or have lanterns dotted all over the ground. Even that is sadly just decorative. You know, aside from providing a really tedious way to get orange dye. And the thing is, since archaeology was supposed to be originally part of Caves and Cliffs, which added glow lichen, and the sniffer seems to be designed specifically for this pushback archaeology update, when the sniffer was announced as the winner, the community made mods that added him to the game early based on his description, and some of these mods even assumed that we would be getting glowing plants of some kind. I don't think it was wrong for us to expect new features from these seeds, such as food or something more unique as, you know, a glowing plant. As every other seed or seed-like plant in the game up until this point provided a new source of food and sometimes even new features. The pumpkin, for example, can be made into pumpkin pie, but the pumpkin itself can also be carved to create golems or worn to prevent endermen from being aggressive, which is especially useful in the end fight. And melons can be sliced and made glistening with gold nuggets for use in healing potions. 
basically everything that came from a seed at least provided food and at best could also be used for extremely useful things like golems and health potions. So we do have a constant history here of what to expect from seeds. Decorative things such as flowers and various nether plants were always grown by bone mealing the ground. Something incredibly simple and effortless to do. Unlike how you obtain these new flowers with the sniffer. Every other mob from the votes changed the game in either a significant way or at the very least greatly improved the quality of life. The sniffer, which was said to unearth ancient seeds, which we thought we knew to be food or something useful, does not currently do that, beyond providing really specific floral decoration. It does effectively nothing. Even the leaked third plant, which appeared to be some sort of vine, was scrapped as well. Though, this doesn't really provide anything that regular vines or ladders could do. But at least then, you could possibly have climbed up it. Or, maybe, not being able to do anything would have been its benefit. Maybe you could decorate with vines without basically putting ladders all over your walls. We'll never know, as that feature seems to have been scrapped completely. So for a quick recap, we had every reason to expect the sniffer to do something, and it currently just sits there and does nothing but provide decoration, in a very tedious and annoying way to do it. But were the other mob vote choices this time around really any better? Well, let's be honest, I would still rather take the sniffer over that golem any day. But I now strongly believe that the rascal should have won. No, it doesn't do something very unique. It does not change the game. But does it improve quality of life? Absolutely. Now, a lot of you older, better, or luckier Minecraft players probably do not even think about this. But due to how they changed the ore spawn with caves and cliffs, it's more common now than ever to be deep down in a cave looking for diamonds and what have you to break all of your iron pickaxes and not be able to continue due to a limited supply of iron. I mean, some of these new caves can go on for literal miles in the Grimstone. Deep Slate. Sorry, I've been following this update for a while and that, that's never left my brain. Anyway, the caves can go on for miles in the Deep Slate and you might only find a handful of iron. Pickaxes alone would be manageable, but if you are at the diamond hunting stage, you also have to remember that the limited iron you find is also going to things like your shield, your weapons, your other tools, your armor, a water bucket for lava, maybe even a blast furnace. If you're not careful, you'll have to backtrack a lot, and in the worst case scenario, you might even get lost down in the labyrinth of caves and need to dig all the way back up. And with how deep caves are now, I do not want to do that with my hands. And it's not just the iron. Maybe it's just as simple as running out of sticks due to using them all on torches or other tools. Even with a lucky iron vein spawn, sticks are another story. Now it's possible to obtain them if you know where a mine shaft might be, but without that, you're kind of screwed. This is where I think the rascal would have been a godsend. He at worst is a bit of redundancy in materials, and at best, he basically allows you to live in a cave forever if you so choose. Or just to spend as much time as you want down there before needing to resurface. So maybe he sounded boring on paper. But do you realize that he could change the way we play the early game? Instead of relying on a village spawn, we could head into deep, expansive caves immediately and only resurface when we feel like it. The Rascal allows you to not only survive, but thrive in caves. He alone could have been for caves what the 1.16 update was for the nether. It's still dangerous, but you could live in not only the nether forever, but now the new caves as well. But this is better than that. They are guaranteed to have an enchantment of some kind, which if you're at the stage of looking for diamonds, I know you're not bringing an enchantment table, a diamond pickaxe to pick it up, and a silk touch axe for the bookshelves. Plus, possibly extra lapis if you have trouble finding more down there in that particular cave. This is why I believe the Rascal would have been a fantastic addition to what literally used to be called Cave Game. That is why while the Rascal seems simple, I think he would have been the best mob in retrospect to be added. 
extra decoration is always nice, but, you know, in a game that has a performance drop every single update, maybe instead of voting for the quantity of features, we should instead be focused on the quality and quality of life. But hey, that's just my dumb opinion. Let me know your dumb opinion down in the comments of the video. And while you're at it, why not subscribe? I would say just leave a like, but... Well, since they removed the dislike button and no one actually even hits the dislike anymore, the ratio of likes to dislikes is no longer exactly helpful data to see what kind of content you guys like. Basically, subscriptions speak louder than words. And if you do subscribe, remember to click the bell to all notifications so you don't miss future videos that you might be interested in. That's all for now. Peace.